All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Kingdom Fishing Adventures. Uh, today, we're gonna try to hit up a few spots that I found on Google Earth. Um, so I just get on Google Earth and find these little bodies of water and go there to see if there's any fish in there. Uh, so we're at our first spot. Um, hopefully there's some fish here. Um, I haven't even looked at it, never fished it before, uh, but that's part of the fun of it, is just going there and seeing uh, what's in there and you never know. Maybe there's an eight pounder waiting in there. So let's go see what's happening. So this first little area looks really weedy. So we shall see. Water's really clear. I don't see any fish, but I do see what looks like maybe a couple beds at one time. But who knows if they're still in here or not. But sometimes it can be hard to see the fish. But with this type of clarity, I would think I'd be able to see them. But they could be hiding in the weeds. Somewhere, I don't know. So guys, I've walked all the way around this body of water here and checked it out to see what kind of was going on. I didn't see any big fish, but I saw some little bait fish. So what I've decided to do is give it a little bit of time, throw some things in there, see what happens. What I'm gonna go with is this little trusty weightless Senko that I always throw. Never go wrong with that. But I've also decided to go with a natural colored chatterbait. Chatterbait is a single hook jig, but it's a bladed jig that kind of vibrates. So it's a little bit flashier, causes a little bit more commotion. A weightless Senko is really quiet and finesse, but a chatterbait is a little bit louder. And I hardly ever fish the chatterbait, but I think I'm gonna throw it in this little deep water here occasionally to see if that brings any fish in. So while we're waiting to see if we got any fish here, let me tell you what's been on my mind the last couple days um, is a verse in James 1, uh, verse 19. It says, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. So there's some really wise exhortation there from James. Um, and it's something I've been thinking about because, to be completely honest and frank about it, I struggle. Um, I usually am very quick to speak and quick to anger rather than quick to hear. Um, and that's not what we've been called to do. Um, and so I've really been praying that the Spirit of God would give me that self-control and, and that ability to just slow down, listen, um, and then and then make a calculated discernment of, of what I've heard or what I've read or whatever it is, whatever form of communication, and then respond. Because too often, especially in today's political and social climate, I am quick to hear something or read something and then I get angry or I react right away. Now, sometimes it's founded and, and, and it's good, but I can't tell you how many times, um, especially when dealing with other Christians, but even in all spheres, I have heard something of threw up red flags or just rubbed me the wrong way or, or, or caused me to kind of, I don't know, get a little bit uh, heated about something. And I respond right away with telling them that what the actual truth is, right? And I, and I kind of go off a little bit half cocked maybe. Um, and a lot of times that ends up with some anger. And that's never a good look. And, and God has um, called us to, to, to be people that are the aroma of Christ. And so we want to be self-controlled and we want to be thinking through things. A lot of times discernment, in order to have discernment, um, it takes a little bit of time in order to process things. And that's why it's always good to be quick to listen, quick to hear, but slow to speak and slow to anger. And, and that's just one of those things that I struggle with. And, I, and I, I'm praying and, and intentionally trying to be uh, more apt to hear um, and understand and take in and then weigh that 
and weigh it um, through God's word by the power of his spirit um, to get a response rather than a quick uh, thought of my own head that just kind of spouts out or to result in anger or something like that. So you could definitely be praying for me in that way. And I'm sure that there's uh, many of you that, that kind of go through that same process in your own minds and in your own lives and when you interact with things. So that's just a good, really good verse, James 1.19. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Just really, really good exhortation. All right, we're back in the truck. As you can tell, this spot was kind of a bust. Um, I'd never been here before. Didn't catch any bites. Um, maybe a little nibble from a blue bluegill or something, but no bass. So we're going to move on. I'm not sure where I'm moving on to, um, but sometimes you just don't catch fish. That's why it's called Kingdom Fishing Adventures and not called Kingdom Catching Trip. It's an adventure. We're fishing. We'll see what happens. All right, you guys, listen up. So I'm at a spot where I know there's fish because I caught a five and a half pounder here a couple trips ago. But the last time I was here, I didn't catch anything. So we're going to give her a shot. It's a little bit breezy up here, so there might be some wind noise. I apologize. But I'm really hoping we get on a fish here. At least one. Give me one. Give me one. Part of the problem is, is the water is so clear that they can see me. There's a tackle box in the water down there. Part of me is wondering if I should walk down there and get that tackle box and try to get that tackle box and try to get myself unsnagged. Let's do it. Dangerous. I'm an idiot because I always get in trouble, always fall down, go boom, but whatever. I'm curious to see what's, if there's anything in that tackle box. Whoa. Okay, I'm just gonna have a seat right here. Oh, there, got that. Nice. I'm sure my line is chewed. Oh, not too bad. All right. So before I go down there and start messing with the tackle box, not that everybody, every fish in town doesn't know that I'm here already. So, let's get down here. How am I gonna get this? I'm gonna get my reel wet. That's what I'm gonna do. Oh, no, no, no. Almost in the water. Kind of cool. Find something when you can't catch fish. Maybe you catch a tackle box. All right. Been in here for a while, it's rusted. It's 
Still close is good. Look at that. I feel like that guy that scuba dives and finds treasures. So we got this. This is our catch of the day. A mini Magnum pocket pack by Plano. Old, but still usable. We'll take it. All right, you guys. Don't say that I never did anything for you. This is amateur tip number one. Lots of amateur tips are gonna follow, but this is number one. This is muy importante. What's gonna follow is probably a little bit TMI for some people, but I just wanna be upfront with you. Um, I'm the type of guy when nature calls, I've gotta answer, I've gotta go, and I've gotta go now. Um, there's no holding it and trying to get to a bathroom. If I gotta go, I gotta go. And when you're semi-remote, you know, 20, 30 miles from the nearest bathroom, sometimes a bathroom is just not an option, right? So, you know, a lot of people, they just pop a squat in the, in the woods or in the desert or whatever, and, and that's fine. Um, but it's not the most comfy thing, and it's, and it's a little awkward, right? I mean, you're going to the bathroom in the woods, it's going to be awkward. But uh, I have found a better way, or, or better yet, my wife has found a better way. Here it is. My wife has gotten me this, this. This is the magic, guys. It is a five gallon bucket with a potty lid on top of it. And what I do is I just keep that in the back of my truck with some plastic bags and some toilet paper. And if nature calls and I can't get to a bathroom, then I just put one of those garbage bags into that five gallon bucket, pop that lid on top, take care of business, and I'm good to go. Don't say I never gave you or did anything for you. Oh, we're getting a little nibble. And let go. Oh, okay. We got a little one. All right, we got a little one. Wow, at least we got one catch. And it is a tiny one. But it's, whoop, and he's off. Slow down, guy. You're gonna hurt yourself. Stop. Stop, you're gonna hurt yourself. Okay. Wow, that is nothing to write home about, but first fish of the day. So if you're keeping score at home, tackle box, check. Largemouth bass, check. We are now at spot 107 for the day. I don't know, this might be my last spot. We've been going at it and going at it and don't have a whole lot to show for it. So we're just gonna see what's up here. All right, we got one. Whoa, whoa, we yeeted him. He was real close to the shore. Whoa, that was close. I hook set him so hard that he flew right out of the water. Okay, you're cool, yeah, you're cool. You're cool. You're cool. Yeah, you're fine. Wow. To say I got a little excited there is an understatement. But there he is. Large mouth. Okay. We got something. Dude, get, get away from me. Dang. Oh, get a bite. Here we go. Got him. Oh, right by the shore. Right by the shore. Nice one. Nice. It's about it. Oh, simmer, simmer. It's about a two pounder, pound and a half. About a pound and a half. Man, you won't, hook won't come out. There we go. All right. Mm, maybe a pound and a half. I don't know. We'll weigh them real quick. Tell you guys what it is. 
Okay, so zeroed out. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, 1.41. Well, everybody, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it. I'm going to call it a day. We managed just a few fish, and those few fish were nothing that we're going to go run and get mounted on our wall, that's for sure. But that's just kind of the way things go sometimes when you're fishing, right? Like, um, it, it's one of those things where you're not always going to catch fish, but it's more about uh, going out there and, and having the adventure. And every time you throw that line in the water, you never know if you're going to catch a fish. And, and if you're going to catch a fish, how big it is and, and what everything entails. So that's the adventure for me. And I like going to new places. We went to some new places, went to some old places, you know, so I'll take it. It's better than sitting around at home. Um, so, all in all, not a bad day. A few fish. Um, we talked about James 119. Uh, we, uh, I gave you amateur tip number one. Remember, many more to come. But amateur tip number one, uh, very important lesson with the uh, literal porta potty. Um, and then also, I caught this, caught this uh, here fancy tackle box and like it's legit like it's there's nothing wrong with it i mean it needs to be cleaned up and it's, we got a hook in there uh but i'm gonna clean this bad boy up and that's the greatest catch of the day so i'm just gonna have to take it all right so please uh subscribe like the video leave comments nice comments don't leave mean comments mean comments aren't cool uh, but please subscribe and like um and thanks for watching kingdom fishing adventures and as always, live in light of the kingdom.